Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Dueling Book Dual Commentary, and this time I'm going to be playing with Layer of Darkness Infernoids, or just Darkness Infernoids for short. Now, this is a deck that I have sort of just taken two different versions of the build and sort of just taken out cards that I didn't like. It's very closely inspired by the build that went 8-2 uh, at YCS Memphis and bubbled, uh, did not make top 32. Uh, but basically, it's it's inspired off of that, but then also, you know, I've just changed things around uh, simply because, uh, like, there were some card choices I didn't agree with and stuff like that. So, this is a list that I'm currently messing around with, I guess you could say. Uh, and it's, it's one of those things that I'm not sure how I feel about this deck. I feel like this deck has a lot more potential than its current builds are allowing it to have. I had this discussion with my uh, Discord the other day. Of like uh, how like none of this deck topped Memphis at all. Zero decks with Layer of Darkness in them topped YCS Memphis, and that seems kind of a stretch to assume that like the Layer of Darkness decks just aren't good enough to top a YCS. Considering how absurd this card is, letting you tribute your opponent's monsters as cost for effects, um, that makes the card naturally just very good at going second potentially. I feel like I feel like the Infernoid deck is sort of at the forefront of like the builds that you could play layer of darkness in because obviously if you don't have layer of darkness in something like the pure build then you're going to be very hindered in terms of what you can do if you're just trying to play the deck with the you know, pure layer of darkness with darkest diabloses and stuff and you're just trying to use the layer of darkness interaction with the trap cards obviously you could you know maximize your chances of getting to layer of darkness but your deck has a very clear target on its head of out the layer of darkness and suddenly half of your cards don't do anything. Whereas the Infernoid deck, Infernoids as an archetype is already strong enough on its own to, you know, top some YCS level events. It's done so in the past. And it also has multiple builds that you could be playing. Now, I don't think the 40 card list, especially after playing it, I don't think the 40 card lists are the way to go with this deck per se because the thing is like this deck, again, has the same sort of problem that the pure layer of darkness builds have of it has a target on its head. If you don't get to Layer of Darkness, even though you have in this build, I have seven ways to it with the Arama Discard and the Layer of Darkness and the Terraforming. If you don't get to it, then you're just playing like a worse Infernoid deck because you're not playing a 60 card variant, you're not trying to mill cards, you're not trying to be sacky, you don't have Fairy Tale Snow, which is one of the you know more powerful cards consistently over the past couple of formats. Uh, I don't know. I just I think this deck has a lot of evolution that it can go through as far as becoming better suited. Maybe orienting it over to 60 cards might be something better worthwhile to test. But as of right now, I've been testing the 40 card version just because it's something that uh, that I was you know able to get a lot of information on from people that have been trying it over the past weekend and that have been testing it in a little bit of a, you know, a time frame before the cards came out. So I was able to get a lot of information for this and test it. So there's a lot of things that may seem weird, like the one Darkest Diablos, the one Lilith. The Lilith is to go with the Mind Crushes and the Void Feasts to try and, you know, get two traps turn one and stuff like that. Especially if you don't have access to Layer of Darkness, that becomes better. But it might just be better to cut the Lilith and the ma uh, and the Mind Crushes for just more copies of Terraforming or just better, you know, starter cards. All that sort of stuff. But you will see the duel as it plays out. Uh, and you will understand some things as I uh, as I discuss them a few more things. So let's just jump straight into the first game. All right. So going into the first game, I win rock paper scissors. I get to choose to go first. I say good luck, have fun, and my opponent says, "Oh no," <laughs> because he assumes that I'm playing World Chalice. So this is somebody that knows of my channel and knows of the stuff that I do. So at least that's fun. Uh, but so I open actually really subpar. I don't have layer of darkness. I'm able to get to void feast, but I drew the one copy of Shjet which means that I can only Void Feast for Decatron and Seismus because I end up discarding the uh, the Shjet for um, for the uh, for the Void Vanishment, which I then send off of uh, off of Void Feast to activate because I don't want to keep the Vanishment. I could have discarded Imagination and then discarded another card to search a second Imagination next turn, but if I keep the Vanishment, right, I can't resolve another Void Feast because I could resolve another Void Feast for Decatron and the second Seismus from deck, but that's going to be very lackluster, so I didn't really care about resolving any more Vanishment searches uh, for anything other than Imagination, which I already have a copy of in my hand that I would have to discard to activate Feast anyway, so things like that. So I've got a counter on the Decatron that has an Anunku effect, and the regular Decatron that was Normal Summoned was Deviated. I did it in the order of Normal Summon and send Deviate, that way if I get hand trapped I could just tribute that Decatron 
uh, to ensure that my Vanishment or my Void Feast goes through. Uh, so now here, unfortunately, there's a little bit of unintentional cheating going on in this game, which is always something that you may find uh, when you're playing on Dueling Book. Uh, I'm very unfamiliar with some of these cards, specifically Arima and uh, Void Imagination is a card I haven't read in several years. And so I even said that like this level 11 Decatron is a problem, and I was trying to find a way to not activate the Void Imagination because I didn't want to do half damage, uh, but I can't summon any Infernoids. And I thought the Void Imagination just made all of your Infernoids that were higher than uh, level 2 into level 1s, but it actually says with original levels. So that Decatron is still level 11. But so I'm still using this game, even though the outcome could have been drastically different. Um, I didn't intend to cheat this man. <laughs> Um, but I'm using this game still to paint the narrative of this deck seems very lackluster in its current form because yeah, I've got these cards on the field. I've got a Deviati that can negate a monster effect. I've got two Decatrons that both have an Anunku sent on them, but I can only do half damage. And I can't close out the game. So there's still possibilities of my opponent had he been playing a deck that could pressure me a bit more with, you know, a four card hand to potentially, you know, do things and be able to just break my board completely. Um, if he was playing something like True Draco or something, then he could have definitely just pressured me into not being able to play the game by just setting a trap and normal summoning the trap triggers, uh, destroying like a Decatron or something, and I just have to negate that or something. And then he can attack over my uh, other Decatron that has a Nuku on it, and then he's got free reign to do whatever he wants, even with the Deviati there. Uh, so like there's there's multiple different things that could have gone wrong But so I end up winning game one even though I did Technically unfair this gentleman by cheating uh, But it's the only time that that ends up happening in this match But I still just left it in because it paints the narrative of my case even further of This deck just feels like it's holding itself back all these layer of darkness builds that I've seen so far that I've tested I've tested multiple they all seem like they're missing something and Infernoids, like I said, if you don't have Layer of Darkness, you're just playing a worse Infernoid deck. I didn't have Layer of Darkness last game. I was playing a worse Infernoid deck. But so, this game, he gets to go first. He goes Armageddon Knight into Ancient Fairy, which I don't know what the significance of that play would be. Um, it only served to make my imagination live. So, interestingly enough, uh, he's playing pure Layer of Darkness, if you didn't uh, understand that by now. Uh, but so, like, I'm able to use Imagination. I send five. Uh, I don't want to send six. I send five different names just to trigger Tierra's two effects. I want to mill three cards, and I want to send my three Intuses from my extra deck to the graveyard, which I do. That way I can pop his face down, his token. He thinks I'm popping his Ancient Fairy, but I'm actually popping my Tiara because at this point I can't summon any Infernoids from Grave that have effects, so I'd rather pop the Tiara so I can then summon Infernoids from Grave, specifically things like a Nuku, especially since I've got the Arima plus Layer of Darkness in my hand. I haven't Normal Summoned yet. So I'm able to tribute his Ancient Fairy. Now from here, I draw a card, and I haven't read Arima that clearly. I thought that Arima was amazing, right? I thought this card was great. I thought you draw a card, and then if you tributed another card, you get to search Darkest Diablos. But no, it turns out it's Or, and my opponent corrects me. And I, even in chat, you can see, I thought that card was much better than it actually is. And it makes so, it makes so much more sense to me now why the... Uh, why the actual pure layer of darkness decks are so handicapped in terms of how they perform. Uh, but so, my play line started with, you know, Patrulia on the layer of darkness because I didn't want that trap to be something that could tribute one of my actual meaningful monsters. And so from here, I can't attack with the Patrulia. I've got damage on board to put him at 3550. I just don't know how to math for a second, so I have to open a calculator and calculate it. Uh, but from here, this point, there's, there's nothing wrong with this Void Imagination here or any of my summons. Um, because of the fact that the Petrulia was on the field when the Nuku got summoned, so that's a valid summon. And then I summoned Arima, and then I drew into Void Imagination, which I activated, which turned my Petrulia and my Nuku into level 1s, meaning I could summon Deviati. Uh, but again, like, this is one of those instances where I was able to close out the game, you know, at least a bit quicker, but that's just because my bodies were bigger, and I got to mill cards. I got to use Imagination to put my Anunku and my Deviati in Grave and then summon those as actual bodies because if you're just using Decatrons as weenie beat monsters, they're locking you out of the best part of your deck uh, and then you 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 lose the sacky nature of what made Infernoids good. It's, it's very strange. I definitely feel like this deck has a lot of evolution that it could go through and that evolution probably puts it up into the 60 card category because 
all these Layer of Darkness cards are great, but I don't think that that should be what the deck focuses on. I feel like it should be an addition to an already strong deck's strengths. Because if you open with Layer of Darkness and Void Feast, then yeah, Jesus, that card, that is very good. That's a great opening. But if you don't have Layer of Darkness and you only have Void Feast, or if you have Layer of Darkness and no Void Feast or no access into it, then your deck is just playing on very, very bad terms. It doesn't do much. And even then, my hand that I had that game was not that amazing outside of the Void Imagination being resolved by my opponent summoning an Ancient Fairy Dragon for reasons that I'm not quite sure of. They rotated the Layer of Darkness out for another Layer of Darkness, special to Arima and got a draw, and I'm wondering why you couldn't have just played Layer, Normal Summoned Arima, and then that would have been that. Definitely would have made my hand a lot worse. Um, I can understand it was probably for like deck thinning purposes with Armageddon Knight and stuff like that, but um, and like the Ancient Fairy takes, takes a card out of your deck with the Layer of Darkness, but at the same time, it just it seems like it was a weird play. But it only served to make the card that milled cards in my deck live, which then made my deck actually operate like a true to form Infernoid deck that is being strengthened by Layer of Darkness with the RMA play and all that sort of nonsense. So it's very interesting. Like. That's one thing that I want to take away from this. I'm definitely going to be testing this deck a bit more in the future, but I feel like this deck needs to have a big evolution. I see some people discussing 60 card builds, and then other people are shutting those like discussions down of like, no, that's definitely not why you would you know play this. But at the same time, there's still a lot of cards that you would play that would be starter cards in that sort of fashion. You could play a bunch of other cards like Left Arm and Grass and stuff like that and make your deck sacky. And, you know, the strengths of a regular Infernoid deck with Fairytale Snow and stuff like that during the times when you don't have Layer of Darkness. And then you could just do things like maximize on Terraformings or maximize on Aramas, Layer of Darknesses, maybe play Metaverse, uh, all this sort of stuff. Um, although that would conflict with Left Arm Offering as well as Void Feast conflicts with Left Arm Offering. But still, like, you would want to, I think you want to maximize your deck's ceiling overall. And the 60 card Infernoid decks seem to be the best way to do that trying to accent it with Layer of Darkness. That might be something I test in the future. But anyway, that was all I wanted to do for this video. It was kind of a slower paced game uh, with a little bit of more of a technical aspect to it in terms of what was going where, um, in terms of being negated and all that sort of stuff. Um, I might play with this deck some more, like I said. If you guys have suggestions for decks you want me to play uh, that are more on the meta-ish or possible like tier two, tier three side, then definitely leave a comment down below. Uh, I might research it, look into it. Uh, but other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Check out the links in the description of my Facebook, as well as my personal uh, Twitch page, which I live stream on at least once a week, or at least I try to. If you want to catch live streams, then definitely that is a place to go look at and follow that page. Uh, but other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. Let me have some feedback in the comments down below of what you think. And as always, take care. I'll see you in the next video.